Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Siler. Arlene is not here today. Um, before we get started and talk about something that's extremely important, near and dear to me, uh, especially for those that are blind or visually impaired, um, let's um, thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and uh, many others, including the support of uh, the, blind, the Division for the Blind of Vermont, and the Association for the Blind in Vermont, and many others, also including um, sponsorships. Are, are one of our new sponsorships is Enough Ministries of Barry, Vermont. Um, so let's get started. Thanks to, uh, uh, well, before we begin our show, let me just uh, talk about a little bit of a commentary. Um, and I don't know if everyone knows there out there, but uh, in Vermont, um, I am uh, slowly losing my vision. Uh, I am visually impaired, and I am getting services from the Division for the Blind of Vermont. Um, so uh, recently, I was in a grocery store. Now, many people who are visually impaired can't see those little stickers that are um, on the shelves. Um, yes, those um, people can probably see large posters um, that are, um, you know, talking about specials either by the um, deli counter or the fish counter. Uh, you know, if, if it's a large enough poster uh, saying a price, then a person can probably see that. But I'm talking about the uh, small, um, the small stickers that um, are by products. So, example, if something is two ninety nine, and then a supermarket puts a price on top of a price, then on top of another price, you can't see that. You know, it, it's a little disconcerting. So I say this as um, a small part of my commentary. Um, stop doing that. The Americans, according to the Americans with Disabilities Act, stores are supposed to have um, large enough print for people to see. Now, since this is the 32nd anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, 
um, stop and think and come out of yourself for a minute and become us. In other words, go into our shoes. What if you were blind and visually impaired and you needed help? So if corporations would stop basically and smell the coffee uh, pretty much, or if, if that is the, the saying these days, stop and smell the coffee, which means help us and then we can help others. Um, so basically, um, according to the Americans with Disabilities Act, all stores are supposed to have large enough print. So stop putting those stickers on top of one another so people can't see. I myself have uh, peripheral vision issues. So uh, let's get started with this. Uh, and if, um, if I haven't today, if, if this doesn't educate you, uh, please get yourself more help through your community blind or uh, blind and visually impaired organization so you can get the assistance that you need. Um, so there, according to the uh, Vermont Center for Independent Living, who basically um, recommended this uh, app, so Be My Eyes is a Danish, and I've tried this, and it's a wonderful thing. Um, so if you have a smartphone, uh, Be My Eyes is a Danish mobile app that aims to help blind and visually impaired people recognize objects and cope with everyday situations. An online community of sighted volunteers receive photos or videos from randomly, randomly, randomly assigned effective individuals and assist them via live chat. In other words, if you're in a store and looking at a product, let's say uh, this was a can of uh, soup and you needed to find the price of the soup uh, you take a picture of it then take a picture of the price and the person can help you on the other end um, this is how this is how this works a visually impaired person starts a live stream showing their view from a cell phone camera <clears throat> they are assigned through a phone call or chat or random volunteer who speaks the same language in the same time zone. Uh, this allows the volunteer to describe the object and assist visually impaired uh, people with that object, such as guiding the person to move the camera and read instructions or clean up a spill if they are um, mopping or, you know, that kind of thing. Through speech synthesis, content can be read out loud and the process encourages a more independent life for the blind and visually impaired person. Um, now, uh, this was released, the app uh, was marketed by Hans Jergen Wilberg. Uh, he had demonstrated this through video chat such as software of Skype and FaceTime which uh, people don't use Skype too much anymore. None of the Taylor, none, none of these apps, FaceTime or Skype, is tailored for the visually impaired. Uh, the development, for development, he joined forces with the Danish Association for the Blind and other organizations. The app was first uh, presented at an event at a, at a startup companies in 2012 and was released in 2015. The co um, in February 2020, um, they raised more funding to help people with uh, who need visual support services, and this is free for people who are visually impaired. Um, and there are actually more apps for the blind. So let me um, uh, talk about those. Okay, so um, there's a website. Um, 
here uh, for those that want to find more apps for the blind. Um, the the apps come from www.brailleworks.com. So www.brailleworks.com. Um, here are the top five apps um, that I'm going to uh, actually go through. Um, and next time I, uh, we come on the show, we'll bring a couple of examples. Um, uh, the five, top five apps, um, if you have problems with money, example, if you have problems identifying a bill, um, there are uh, money identifying apps. It's a clip that goes on your money and it will actually tell you what it is. Um, so that's one. It's called LookTel, which is a money identifying app. Then there are, um, there's one, um, called Tap Tap C, which is almost the same thing, but it helps you, uh, identify photos and, um, other ones like that. Um, so that's www.brailleworks.com. Um, so let it, let us go <clears throat> through this here. So BrailleWorks.com is a um, company that transcribes. If you need help with Braille and you need help learning how to transcribe it, uh, you can go to www.brailleworks.com. Um, and they do provide... Uh, uh, Braille transcription services and things like that. Now, the most interesting thing about this website is that there, if you are having problems and you are visually impaired and need, um, a, you know, a bit of counseling per se, um, there is um, there is a blog that you uh, that people here can, um, that people viewing our show um, can look at on BrailleWorks.com. Uh, they have a Braille that talks about um, going through Braille and transcribing it and the problems with it. And then also they have uh, articles about the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, which brings me to this. Um, according to the Americans with Disabilities Act, in terms of Braille, it is it is um, imperative. The Americans with Disabilities Act, formed in 1990, um, is a is wide-ranging civil rights law that prohibits under certain circumstances discrimination based on disability. Now, in terms of um, Braille, according to the ADA standards, uh, Braille is only required in signs that identify room, space, or area. Um, in other words, a uh, men's room, a women's room, um, so on and so forth. Um, now, there are five things that a person should know, that a business should know, if uh, you are going to add ADA signage um, or adding Braille to ADA signage. First, find out if the signs require Braille. You might, uh, according to this, you might be surprised that not all ADA signs require Braille. According to the ADA standards, Braille is only required on signs that identify a room. Um, it is required to put Braille on the following signs. Restrooms, meeting and conference room signs, utility room signs, meaning uh, for janitors and other people who work, classroom signs, uh, common room signs. It is not required, but people do anyway. Um, it is not required to put Braille on directional signs, elevator signs, check-in, in other words, at a reception desk. Um, 
informational signs, open hour signs, in other words, when a business is open and closed. Um, and if there's a security guard, um, a sign pointing to that. Um, also, exit signs um, are not required. Refuge, uh, um, in other words, where garbage uh, is. Uh, stairs and floor. Um, but, again, you are required. Now, if, <clears throat> if your sign requires Braille, please make sure the text is raised. Raised text has a purpose. At, at least 10% of the 1.3 million people who are legally blind in the U.S. actually know how to read Braille, which I'm going to be learning. Um, a sign with Braille makes it a tactical sign, uh, a tactile sign with a purpose of serving the visually impaired, which means text has to be raised as well. Um, um, okay, now... Use, <clears throat> use the right version of Braille. There is not one, not two, but three levels of complexity in English Braille. ADA standards require grade two, <coughs> grade two Braille, um, which was introduced as a space-saving alternative to grade one Braille. Grade two Braille abandons one-to-one -one transcription and adds hundreds of abbreviations and contractions to fit easier on signage. Um, now, again, uh, for more information on this, you can go to www.tinkeringmonkey.com that's T-I-N-K-E-R-I-N-G monkey.com forward slash guides on guides on ADA signage. Um, and you can, and basically it would go into that. Now, um, number four, keep Braille transcriptions, to, transcriptions together. To make easier for the visually impaired, <coughs> it is required that all Braille is grouped together in one section and always located at the bottom of the sign. Um, number five. ADA standards, uh, specifically dimensional requirements, in order to uh, ensure that um, the Braille is easily, uh, easily and comfortable to read. There are no sharp edges. <clears throat> no sharp edges, please. Therefore, it's important to choose a sign vendor with experience with ADA signage to ensure that it is correct. And is the, and the uh, material is processed correctly and is used correctly. Um, now, um, for more information again on this, you can go to www.tinkeringmonkey.com forward slash ADA signage. Um, and if you need help, Please contact your um, your community um, disability organization, who will be gladly to help. Now, um, let's talk about um, for a brief couple of minutes, uh, which is very important. Here in Vermont, there is an organization called Vermont Center for Independent Living. Vermont Center for Independent Living can uh, turn around and um, help you le learn how to be more independent in your home and as well as, you know, um, in the community. Uh, they can give you classes on how to, um, they can teach you how to be more independent. Uh, they can give you workshops on how to uh, um, manage, uh, manage your money and uh, other uh, things like that. So if you need help from the Vermont Center for Independent Living on how to advocate for yourself and be more independent 
It's extremely important for people with special needs to be more independent. Um, um, and, you know, um, yes, re relatives can help, but um, if you're not independent, then, um, you know, don't, in my vast opinion, uh, doing this uh, show for many years here in Vermont, as well as for, th for 30 plus years, don't let um, relatives kind of take over it, or, or be on top of a person. Yes, if you need further assistance, yes, ask for relatives' help. But you must be independent uh, till you cannot be independent. Which which means um, there are uh, situations where re where relatives do become people's um, guardians if they so need it. Uh, then it becomes um, you know whom can I trust to help uh, me become more independent? So Vermont Center for Independent Living does help people with special needs become more independent. For more information on that, and we will have them on the show at some point again, uh, you can go to www.vcil.org. That website, once again, is www.vcil.org. And for more information on uh, services for the blind and visually impaired, you can go to um, our partners' uh, or organizational website. Uh, we have Division for the Blind of Vermont uh, as a um, partner in the show. You can go to www.dcbi. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, um, dvbi.org. That's www.dvbi, Division for the Blind of Vermont, dot org. And also, the partnering organization to that is um, the Association for the Blind of Vermont, which is www.associationforthevermont.org. Um, Associationforthevermont.org. And they can help you with... Um, Anything that you need help with uh, when it comes to equipment, um, they can help you with the computers, they can help you with tablets, they can help you uh, with um, uh, money clips or anything helping the blind and, and visually impaired become more independent. Um, and the last thing I want to mention on this show, you know, it has not been easy. Uh, um, doing what we do um, on this uh, television program. However, um, we have had the Association for the Blind of Vermont on this show before. And for more information on that, and last time they came and they brought uh, many um, uh, uh, pieces of equipment uh, from um, kitchen equipment to uh, helping someone who cannot read a medication bottle if it's a little bit too small example again money so if it's too small for someone to read they can help you so for more information on uh, the um, on Able and on air and the programs that we've done on this show including uh, helping people become more independent through our journalism. Uh, you can go to uh, Orca Media's website at www.orcamedia.com. Uh, we will have more shows within the coming weeks on uh, how to navigate blindness, how to uh, read Braille, and how to navigate becoming more independent. Again, we would like to thank our sponsors uh, for um, sponsoring our program and our um, and partnering with us. Uh, we would like to thank Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the Association for the Blind of Vermont, the Division for the Blind of Vermont, and also 
If you need any extra assistance being blind and visually impaired, you can go to www.afb.org. That's the Association for the Blind. Uh, they're in New York, but they have a national organization. So that's www.afb.org. Uh, and if you would like to read any information on Lewis Braille and Helen Keller, uh, you can go to afb.org, www.afb.org. Uh, they have a library on Helen Keller's books and uh, pictures as well and, um, you know, different things of that nature about her life. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you're blind and visually impaired. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press, Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.